and restart again. Okay. So we'll get started. Hello, how are you? <laughs> nice. Hi, I thought I'd show my face. <laughs> I love seeing faces. It's it's always a good thing. And more people will come in slowly but surely. So we'll get started regardless. Oh um, yeah, the three of us. <laughs> for now it's the three of us. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Say hi, Elizabeth and Caitlin. I'm Jaya. And I just turned two last week. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hi. You're very cute. <laughs> you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, you know the <laughs> language. You're a smart guy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, Jai. So we can even talk, I don't have it on my list, but we can even talk, because um, we're going to talk non-toxic um, personal care. So we can even add in some baby. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what a little cutie bear. Uh, so we'll get started because I know people will catch on the replay and other people are going to join in. Hello. Hi. <laughs> now, I'm hoping that some of you guys will add into the conversation as well today. Right, Caitlin? That's you too. Everybody, everybody getting involved. Hey, I don't know if I have any of the things on the list, but that's okay. That's okay. You can, but <laughs> you, can still call, you can still converse and get in there. So today Perfect. we're talking about um, low toxic home and personal care, because I know people were asking about this. And one of the reasons that we do look into this, among other things, is we do talk a lot about a good, healthy liver, and our liver is our detox organ, and we want to be good to it. And we want to try to um, not overload it with too many things that we don't have to, especially if there's other options. So um, I am not the guru know-all of all things home and beauty, toxic free, mm -hmm. especially beauty. I'll usually bring on like Maria or Crystal. We've had Maria come on before, um, but that's where I've got a few of my products and that's one area where I'm pretty good with them, um, a low toxic home. And I've got some good thoughts on that. But as far as like the low toxic beauty, I've got some good like deodorants and lotions and stuff like that. But I would love to hear from you guys as well. And if none of us have a clue on it, we might need to bring Maria or Crystal back to do, or even um, there's there's a couple of companies that I know they work with, and maybe we could even get one of the owners of those companies like Green Envy or something to come on and talk a little bit about it. Cause that might, might be fun as well. So let's get to work. Um, I'm gonna go um, area by area or uh, category by category, I should say, meaning like laundry detergents or the laundry room versus the kitchen versus the bathroom. Um, and I'd love like if you guys, I have behind me on the table, you can't see, but there's a stack of cookware and body products and cleaning products and all the things that we can discuss. Um, and as I said, this talk today will be all hands and decks. So even if you don't have your product handy, you can either run and get it if you want to show it or you can just chat on it. Um, or if you have any experiences, um, you can share. And one of the things that I want to make sure that is always open and always known is you don't need to agree with the topic that is being said. So if I say something about, I like a cast iron pan and you say, no, I read that it is no good and here's why, please share, okay? It is very much an open discussion and not a lecture, okay? Uh, so let's start off, let's start off in the laundry room. And um, with the, we'll start off with the laundry room and I'm gonna share just some of the things that I have from my laundry room that I like to use and why. I don't have my um, baby soap anymore because I'm now washing Tyson stuff in the same thing that I use. So this is the one that I like to use often, which is the True Earth. Um, do I have the fragrance or the fragrance free? Let's see what I did this time. I think I might've did, I think I did the fresh linen, which technically um, the fragrance free is better. Fragrances um, can be endocrine disruptors. Um, they can cause issues with asthma and other things like that. So fragrance free is gonna be always your number one way to go. Um, but I just kind of wanted, you know, every so often I'll throw in a fragrance and I did this time. Um, one of the reasons that I like this one, this is not an ad, I have no association with this company, um, is that it is, this is, 
how many loads? 32 loads, and it weighs a little bit more than a piece of paper. So not only is it um, cleaner in ingredients and free of a lot of the, the chemicals that are in a lot of laundry detergent, but we just have to think of the amount of gas being saved. Um, so just environmentally as well, when it's being driven across the country. Um, and if you still want to do the, the heavier ones, just um, know that concentrated is a good idea because you don't need, you can add water. You know, you can do a smaller scoop and put it in water anyways. I don't know why we need to have so much water in our laundry detergent because it's just, it's not good for the environment, right? Um, but in general, so the laundry detergents, um, some of the things that I read, and again, this is not my, uh, this is not my, main zone, I'm more nutrition, but I, I did do some research and I thought it was interesting. One of the things that it said was the blue green color of the detergent is on purpose and it actually leaves a film on your clothing to make it appear brighter to our retina. Um, so it's actually just a film left on it. So I thought that was an interesting fact. Um, but in general, I'll just add, a, I'll just read a little clip that I got from a doctor's website. So it said, um, each, each piece of laundry you pull out of your washing machine contains toxic residue from detergents, which not only lingers on the fabric, but rubs off on your skin. Conventional detergents are comprised of a concoction of fragrances, endocrine disruptors, which is like your hormones and that type of thing, um, neurotoxins, and potent cancer-causing chemicals. Chemically, chemically engineered to leave a film on your clothes so that they look blue-green um, color to give you the, the effect the visual effect of brightness. So just some kind of thoughts on the laundry detergent as well as with bleach. Um, so just even the scent of bleach is dangerous. Um, just smelling it, I found some other things. So uh, it can cause breathing difficulty, coughing, chemical pneumonia, etc. So I use this one instead. This is the laundress. Um, so it's an, it's, I think it's an oxygen, oxygenated, unscented, um, bleach, but this is a good safe alternative and you can use it on whites, but you can also use it on colors. Um, the laundress that you'll notice, I have a few of their products. It's just kind of a, a nice ingredient. Um, yeah, clearing for you. So yeah, this, this is an oxygenated bleach, which if you go on the EWG website, which is a site that I really like. Um, environmental working group, they'll mention that the oxygenated bleach is much safer um, for us than regular bleach. So it's a, it's a little bit expensive, but honestly, I bought this, I think two years ago and I'm just hitting there and I use it in all of my like white to low because you only need to put that much in. You just fill a capsule in, um, the capsule, then you pour it in and you're done. Um, is it as effective as regular bleach? I don't know if it's like as, as bright, but when you're talking about, it's got health benefits, but it also has some of the bleach benefits as well. It's, it's a good thing. So you don't necessarily need to do this brand, but if you're, you're generally looking for an oxygenated, oxygenated, that's a hard word to say for some reason, <laughs> bleach. Um, another thing is the dryer sheets. So dryer sheets are another one that one really bad for the environment. I mean, just think of the amount of waste that we have happening here for absolutely no reason. Um, and then let me just see the little blurb. And again, I'm pulling blurbs because again, this is not, this isn't, this isn't something we talk so much about in nutrition. It's more about the liver and just the body's health. So I found some, some internet health, but I tried to go to all pretty legit websites um, of either like doctors or scientists. Um, okay, so the softness layer left, uh, the softness is a layer that is left on your fabric. So that's number one. Um, it's been, they've been linked to respiratory illness, including asthma and cancer. According to the air quality, atmosphere and health study, VOCs emitted from the dryer vents after using popular, popular brands of laundry detergent and scented dryer sheets include chemicals like acetaldehyde <laughs> and benzene I know is a really bad one which are considered to be carcinogenic so what I like to use instead and they're looking a little worse for wear because they are old this bad. they probably need replacing there was three one is in something that we're probably just not wearing anymore and one day we'll pull out that old t-shirt and find the third dryer ball but one of them is forever missing <laughs> so I got these they're wool dryer balls 
um, and you throw them in and they give your clothes a little bit of bounce. Um, some people will like to put um, drops of essential oils on them as well to add a nice scent to their clothing. I'm kind of, I'm semi on the fence on um, essential oils, mainly because I haven't had time to research the negatives that I've read about them. So I'm kind of just like, until I can do both sides of the research, I use them sparingly. I, I love the smell of, um, of lavender when I take a bath. So I do use um, the lavender um, Epsom salts in my bath because it just makes me feel really happy. But outside of that, I've kind of left my essential oils for a second um, until I can do further research. So if anyone is like a big essential oil person and has some good information on it, I would love to hear from you um, as well, because I know um, the girls that gave this to me, that gifted these to me, they, they gave them to me with um, an essential oil um, drop and it smelled phenomenal. So if you wanted like soft, nice smelling clothing, it's a nice natural way of doing it. Um, last thing I have on laundry is, uh, is a very short one because I didn't get time to look into it much further, but apparently uh, the dry cleaner leaves some pretty intense chemicals on your clothing, but there are green or organic dry cleaners. So you can look those up as well and have it as, be a little bit healthier. So I'll turn the floor to you guys to share any favorites, um, any thoughts, anything you guys know about healthier laundry and... All the hands go up at once. <laughs> I got nothing. I got, I got nothing. Other than Norwex, I don't know if that's going to come up in your talk at all. Um, just the chemical free cleaning. Um, I love Norwex, but uh, tell us about it. Um, does anyone here on the call know what Norwex is? Anyone know? Um, so they have a whole wide variety of stuff, and you can only buy them through um, kind of like like pyramid marketing, like they have pamphlets and like reps and stuff like that, kind of like an Avon type style of thing. Um, but all of their, their cloths and their detergents, um, they're into, they're interwoven with silver. So there's actually no chemicals in them, but everything is antimicrobial as soon as you use everything. And so they have a detergent powder, which is lovely, but again, it's, I think it's like $45 for a bag, but it will last you I don't know, like 140 loads kind of thing. So it will go on for a long time, but it's triple the price of the supermarket piece, which I started moving to that once I had little kids because I didn't want chemicals in their stuff. So yeah. Yeah. And that's and that's one thing. And thank you for sharing that. And and for anyone that does have the young kids there, um, fragrances are really try to avoid them, especially like under three years old. Um, they're they're really, really um hard on them. You know what I mean? Like it's a lot for them to to take in. Um, so if you see like baby scent and stuff like that, they don't, they don't care. They don't need it. <laughs> so as much as you're just like, oh, it will smell so nice and they'll smell all baby like, just try, try to to stop yourself <laughs> from doing it. Um, because it's not ideal for them, especially for them to be sleeping in it. Um, okay, so anyone else, anything laundry related, any, any rebuttals, any thoughts, any shares? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I've always been interested in getting to know cleaner products to use, I guess, at any point, whether it be yeah. cosmetics, household. I was using for a time, very short time, uh, Method, that brand. Method, new yeah. I'm not sure if that really is a true, honest, clean brand. I don't know if it has any covered up synthetics or fillers, but I did like it, to be honest. Why I did it stop? It um, you know what? I, I actually pulled a link to share with you guys that I, I didn't even really look at myself, but it was just kind of the, I'll put it into our chat. And if you don't know how to find the chat, you just... Um, it's there now. You just go to the bottom of your screen and click chat and it will pop up on the right side of your screen. Um, so I just put the, the list from the EWG of laundry detergents. And I feel like I saw Method as one of the good ones. Um, but what I found was um, a little alarming was that uh, they graded them A through F, just like school. And 60% of brands got a, a D or an F. So most brands like Tide and, and Gain and, and most of the ones that you'll see at the grocery store, like right 
in front of you, you know, um, those are the ones that are the highest chemical, like literally getting an F, like just like you fail all categories kind of things. So just, you know, just the things to keep in mind. But I mean, it's not all like, for instance, when I say that I'm not giving it as a blanket statement. So it's, it's not every single tide. It's like certain ones, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think that they're tide free is, is going to be listed as, as one of the negatives, but I also didn't read that yet. And you have a question, go for it. I see hand up. Okay. Um, both of my kids are on their iPad, so you're going to hear it. And I'm really sorry. Um, but I don't have, I don't have a recommendation for detergent. However, I, I did read something about it containing a lot of water. So you're practically purchasing water, mostly water. Yeah. Um, for cleaning though, I tried something the other day. Um, I have a lot of stainless steel. And so, um, you know, the bleach, like, smells a lot and like stuff with and one of my kids has autism and so he's very very sensitive to scents so I tried um that's who's talking now by the way um to himself um but I tried baking soda and water just baking soda and water and everything was like super shiny and super clean I was like really no way like there's yeah. something wrong so I don't know if you know it's not I, I mean I, I don't know about healthy or whatever but I, it doesn't have chemicals I mean it's oh, baking soda great. but it's not you know and for the shower we um so I bought this little brush thing that has like a it kind of I, I don't want to show it to you <laughs> that, but it's like this long thing right and um you pour this stuff in and it has a brush at the end and you can squeeze out we put um dishwashing detergent water and baking soda and it actually does wonders in the shower and it doesn't have a smell to it so anyway if you don't want to try it <laughs> no I love that and I, I love those shares I was, um, I was watching the other day, there's a, um, a YouTuber that I really enjoy her videos. She's like a mommy blogger um, named Emily Norris. And she did, um, she does mommy videos and she does cleaning videos. And she did, um, she's not like holistic or anything, but she did a cleaning video. She likes to test things and she, she'll go all in. Like when she does a video, she, I don't know how long she spends doing it, but she tested, um, a natural, like she did a homemade laundry detergent, uh, what's it called, a uh, window spray, uh, surface cleaner, like all these different ones, stain remover, and she made them all. And then she did comparisons of like, she dirtied up two t-shirts with chocolate and dirt, and she washed one with regular detergent in them one. So she wasn't trying to sell you on the DIY, which I liked because I'm just like, not all DIYs work, you know, like I want it. But so she actually showed the comparison where she washed the chocolate and dirt covered shirt in, in regular and, and her homemade and she sprayed, she dirtied up two windows exactly the same and did her natural versus, and she said, okay, here's what worked and here's what didn't. And definitely like baking soda and vinegar, those are your two like all-star products if you're making things at home. Um, and this is where for me too, because like I said, like the food stuff I'm good with, I'm good with a lot of home stuff, but it's mostly purchase stuff. I, I just haven't found time in my life to be a DIYer at the moment, but I do know from when, right? <laughs> like, where's the time for this? Um, <laughs> but as far as people who are up for it, um, I do know baking soda and vinegar show up in like every single category for, you know, shower sprays and fruit sprays and all the different things. So I'm sure that that was amazing because the baking soda does wonders. <laughs> I love that. I love your shares, guys. They're wonderful. Um, but yeah, but you can check out that, what I put into the chat there, I'm like pointing, what I put in the chat there as far as you can look up your laundry detergent that you purchase and just kind of see what the thoughts are on it from the EWG um, and just kind of decide. As, and as far as the being filled with water, there was one other laundry detergent that I used to purchase um, when Tyson was little. And that was, um, it was a girl's name and it was Suds something somebody said and she had like a that arm and hammer kind of look where she had like the banana or something like kind of like you know you know <laughs> Charlene knows what I'm talking about but it's like a tin it's an actual tin and it's full of a, a, a 
powdered material um, and it's supposed to be more environmentally friendly it was a million loads like it lasted forever and ever and ever it did a very good job um so that was that was another one that i do remember when i was researching and i just wanted it to be really clean really basic especially when i was cleaning his stuff so and there was a baby version so i just used the baby version on everybody's clothes so yeah <laughs> but yes laundry detergent just remember like especially just think one thing think of this you're washing your towels you just worked out, you got in the shower, your shower is hot, the room is steamy, your pores are open, right? You put on your lotion, your skin is very ready to take in things because we are a sponge, it has holes, it's permeable. And then you put on a towel that has a coating of toxins on it and then they go in your skin, right? So just kind of like that is the, the thought process when you're thinking, should I or should I not do a low toxin detergent? Or I'm wearing it all day and it's hot outside and I'm sweaty. Again, your pores open, the toxins go in, okay? Um, so good reasons to be clean. And the dryer balls are amazing. Hubs used to used to do the, uh, well, we both used to do the dryer sheets and he would, he, he, you know, he was totally good with these. So they're, they're good ones. I am a big fan of the wool balls. Some people do tennis balls, but I don't know how they do that. It's really, really noisy. <laughs> um, okay. Dryer sheets, da, 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 fragrances. Okay. So let's move on to one that um, I just have a, like a short amount of, of information on, but just something to keep in mind. Um, and that's fragrances. So some of you may not like this because I know a lot of people really like candles. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, so just, just maybe try to look for the low toxin candles um, or something like that. Like I've got one that is probably not low toxin, but I just, I don't use it. I just leave it and it has a tin on it. And it's really pretty. I just have it in my kitchen. And every so often I'll just take a quick whiff of it and put it back away again. Um, but I don't burn it. Um, as far as burning candles, I know beeswax candles are supposed to be pretty decent. Um, but you want to just kind of maybe spend the more money on the ones that are lower toxin and it make it more of a splurge when you do it versus getting kind of just the home scents ones that are just on sale, but we don't really know what's inside them because um, they can be really, really bad for you. Um, and additionally, and this is where I, this was where my thought process, oh, sorry, let me just, Brittany, you jump in and then I'll go again. Go ahead. Sure. I just wanted to ask a question if there was, if anyone knows what the difference between like coconut wax and soy wax is, right? Because there's a lot of like lovely low toxin options, but like what, what is the difference? That's a good question. I don't, I haven't, I haven't even looked into it. No one? Okay. Because they can charge you like double or triple for very tiny little candles that are made with, you know, and I'm like, this is lovely, but like, what is the benefit? <laughs> yeah, and I'm not a candle burner, so it's never been something that's been such an interest where I've looked into it unless it's like, let me look for other people quickly. And it's always beeswax that comes up as the as the main one, but it, beeswax has its own scent. So no matter what you do, it's gonna have that beeswax undertone of that honey, honey-ish undertone to it. So yeah, so soy and coconut, that would be that would be a good one that we could look up. And we could we could play and throw that onto the wall because I don't know anyone else. Everyone's just like <laughs> got to research, but I can tell there's candle burners in the group, and I know my sister in law loves candles as well, so it's probably something I should look up as well for her. Um, but the next one too is air fresheners, and I hope we all know that air fresheners are just a huge no no. Like it's just like a, a don't don't buy it, don't gift it. If you get it, don't re-gift it. Just let's get them out of circulation because they're they're just so bad. Um, uh, some of the things that it said in my research that it can cause is cancer, birth de defects, autism, kidney damage, migraines, allergic reactions, et cetera. So that just sounds really bad um, just for, you know, hi, Michelle. <laughs> um, just like unnecessary for, um, just a nice scent. Um, some of the things that we can do instead of this, um, and it's not gonna add the sweet scent, but if we're just looking for a fresher air, 
I mean, plants, you know, snake plants are great for the air, spider plants are great for the air. You know, I'm a big fan of all the plants, just got a new tree in the bedroom, I'm very excited. I'm actually, um, Tyson's bedroom doesn't have a lot, it, it has like one north facing window. Um, so I think I'm going to add a snake plant to his room because those are really, really good for oxygen. Ox oxygenating the air and they don't need a lot of light and they're very easy to take care of. So I don't think that he'll kill it. Um, so if anyone is looking for something and if you're like a really like a black thumb, like you're just like, they die every time you try, uh, you could try um, a snake plant um, to get some oxygen happening in your house as well as the spider plants. Those ones are really good. Um, another thing is, and I've got mine going right now, right there. Um, that is my, um, it's, it's a, it's a fan, but it's also an air purifier. So it has on it, it will tell me if I go to info, like what the VO2 is and, and just all the different things in the air. So that's, that's a good one. It's not the best though. So the Dyson is very expensive and it is not the best air purifier. I got it because it was heat and it was cold and it was air purifying and the brand just made me feel safe to put it. I mean, like I got it for Tyson when he was a baby and now it's just used for everybody. Um, and it being so, so hot in Toronto today, we've got all our windows closed. So I wanted to have some circulation happening in the house. So I've had it on all day. Um, but those are better options. And I know it's not the same as, as a, a room freshener, uh, but it is a better option. Now I, I, wanted to share this one. This is again, this is the laundress again. Um, this is one that I had bought because it said non-toxic, biodegradable and allergen free. Um, and because I already liked the brand, but from a few other products that I'd purchased from them. Um, so the ingredients are, do I can't read today, excuse me. <laughs> Deozonized water, alcohol, um, and essential oils. So there is kind of like, well, and that's what I was going to say with the essential oils. So um, it's it smells just so good. Like I, I spray it and I just want to stay in the area that I spray it. And I talk about that as I say, stay away from room fresheners. But the ingredients made me, made me feel kind of good. Um, about it. So it's their home spray. Um, but the only reason that I wasn't kind of like super sold and I only use it every so often um, is because I was listening to a lecture on um, a scientist that had to do with um, uh, cleaning the air. And um, he basically said that, you know, the, um, you know, the essential oil, um, I don't know what's wrong with me today, the diffusers, the essential oil diffusers, he said that that is so bad for your air quality. And I was like, really? Because they smell so good. And you know, everyone always says they're so good for you. And I want to believe that because that's a lot more fun than believing that they're potentially not good for your breathing. So um, I didn't further research it ever since I listened to that lecture, but I also kind of became on the fence with my essential oils as to should I diffuse them or should I not? Charlene says, you know, you could talk guys. Like, just talk. don't make it the only my voice happening. Charlene, oh wait, um, I, I missed some other, I missed some, Molly Suds. Yes, Molly Suds is the one that I was talking about. Thank you. Um, maybe how fast it burns. Was that to do with um, the, the candles and maybe it, it, it lasts longer. So that's why it's more expensive. That's a very good point. Um, and Shalini says, I'm addicted to sense. I was, I was strongly weaned off the Bath and Body Works, girl. <laughs> Get off those um, <laughs> candles and electric wallflowers. Anything vanilla is my weakness. I've shifted into essential oil diffuser. I'm sorry. <laughs> However, I'm learning it isn't the best. Are you learning that from um, before me saying anything? And if so, I'd love to hear what you heard as well. No, I'm learning right now as you're speaking oh. because so, so <laughs> during the pandemic, I'm like, oh, I don't like the smell of my house anymore. It needs to, it needs to have fragrance. It needs to be scented with vanilla. I then said, okay, oh, hey, you know what? I'm going to reinvest in, in sage. And I bought a few of the electric diffusers. The yeah. set. I put one in my son's room that is marketed for babies, children called Aroma Fairy. 
we're like, oh, it might be a placebo. We think it works. <laughs> and so yeah. now I'm saying it, it doesn't. I, I, now well, I, I don't know what Well, not doing. necessarily, because that's the thing. I'm not saying it is or isn't. I'm saying I heard a different perspective. And that made me diffuse some oil in a room and turn on um, this guy here. And what this guy here does, not sure, can you see the little, let's bring you down. Here you can see my, <laughs> my table <laughs> for you guys. Um, okay, so here we go. So if I hit info, Okay, so it's got the PMAs and the PM10. Don't ask me what all these things are, but they're the toxins, the VOCs. I know the VOCs are in like paint and all that stuff. So basically it tells you, and it, it gives you the yellow, red, and, and up to red um, line right there just to kind of say, oh, it's back on. Um, just to kind of say this is good or this is bad. Um, and it will go across as a red line if you start to have bad things in the air. Like, um, for instance, I realized that um, when I was putting the humidifier on when I was still in the condo um, and I was filling the uh, humidifier with tap water, all of a sudden, I was completely freaking out because in Tyson's room, that turned red, right? So it was like your air quality is absolute garbage. It's red. I was like, oh my God, I got to get Tyson out of the house. I don't know what's going on. And then I figured out it was because I was using tap water, um, which uh, the chemicals and the stuff from the tap water and the hard water and all that kind of stuff was coming out. And um, that's when I changed and I bought the uh, uh, when you steam your water, what's that called again? What's wrong with me today? Tyson's been up and I have not been sleeping well. Um, you know, when you, you just distiller, I bought the distiller because you have to use a distiller, um, to put in the humidifier. So I would distill the water to put in the humidifier and then all was good again. So then to test it, I diffused some oils and did it near that and it did the same thing, it turned red. So I was just like, hmm, okay, still, I don't know. Like, I don't know, have not done further research other than hearing this one doctor that talks about air quality, doing the one test myself with this and it turning red but I don't, I don't know. So I'm not putting a solid, like, don't do it or it's bad. I'm just saying, I don't know. And I need further research. So just kind of, you know, play with that and just know the better ways of getting the good air is an air filter is a plant. Those are, those are your, like, for sure, those are good. Right. Um, and there was um, a guy that used to come in and do my water filters and my um, shower filters um, named Frank Hine, who I just loved. And he, his life belonged to filtering water and air. It was like his whole existence. He, you could tell, you know, you can tell someone just loves their job. I knew he loved his job. And every time he would come and do the filters for an hour, he would chat to me about water for like 10 years. <laughs> every year he'd come and we'd have an hour long chat about water. And it was awesome. I loved it. I met him when I was studying nutrition and he came in and did a chat at school. Um, but anyways, so his um, little saying that he said was, um, if you don't have an air filter, you're the filter. And I thought that was something that really stuck. And I was like, mm, yeah, that makes me want to get an air filter. So I said to him, so can I buy an air filter? And he said, no. And I said, why? And he said, there aren't any that are good enough. He said, the ones that were good enough have been taken off the market. And I don't like the ones that there are. So there's nothing for me to sell. And that's also how I know he loves his job because I would have bought whatever <laughs> he told me to buy. And he could, there was nothing that he would sell me because he didn't believe in anything um, that was out there, which also made me sad <laughs> and I had to do further research. Um, let me just see what I see comments. Put up your hands and start talking. Stop putting stuff in the, in the chat. Just give me some conversation. <laughs> okay, it says uh, Amway home laundry detergent. Martha, that's one that you like, the Amway. Okay, so that's good. I love getting the yeah. shares of other products. Go ahead, Martha. Yes, I was a little bit late on the laundry, but I do like a lot that um, brand Amway. And it says that it's uh, biodegradable. It's, um, uh, let me see, dermatology and allergy tested. Um, has um, uh, 
Let me see the ingredients here. Uh, has no phosphate, chlorine, or other ingredients. It's safer for the environment. I mean, it's better than the others, and it's very concentrated. It, it is a little bit expensive, $36 uh, for four liters, so it's not that bad. And uh, it's good. I, I have the vitamins also. They're really good. Mm -hmm. and I rotate in between these and the regular ones from the supermarket that is uh, Armor Hammer because I have two large dogs. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I do that. Yes. That's great. No, that's super helpful. I love hearing. I love hearing what other people are using. So that's very helpful. And I'm seeing, um, I want to, I want to pronounce this right. Um, Omaya, Omaira, Omaira. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> So you were saying you love the rose sage lavender combo. That sounds so, those ones plus bergamot, they're just, <laughs> right? I actually, I get it loose. Um, and then I just, I, I can't, like, I won't burn it when the kids are up because not only don't they, do they complain, but it's just that I have to worry that it's hot and, you know, all this stuff. So, um, but it's kind of part of my self-care routine at night to kind of wind down and it makes the place smell good and it does all kinds of stuff. So that's how I get my fix. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And I'm like, me too. Like I've, I've got my, my rose spray here that I'm like, it just it smells so good. Uh, which I, when we had Maria on um, from The Fix with Maria, and she said that the uh, hyaluronic acid, you have to have a wet face before putting it on or it just pulls the water from your skin and does like a bad thing, right? You got to watch that episode with Maria. Um, and I was like, what? I've always like patted my skin dry and then I add it and I'm like, shit, I've been doing it wrong all this time. Um, so I, I spray on like something like this or just I've got another... Um, you know, the line fresh at Sephora, they've got like a fruit antioxidant spray, which is, oh my God, it's, it's expensive, but it smells amazing. So I'll either spray that on or this one um, before I put the hyaluronic acid on. Good tip for everyone. Her, her episode was really good, by the way. Um, she had some really good tips, but so I have that because the rose smell is just like, oh my God, intoxicating. Um, so yeah, so I'm all over the fence on trying to figure out because even like for the yoga mat spray, there's some amazing, you know, you mix a little bergamot and a little bit of uh, lavender and a little bit of this and that and you spray your yoga mat before you do Pilates and it just, you just, it just smells so good the whole time you're doing it, but I've stopped doing it until I have time to do that research because I'm just like, I don't want to, you know, anyways so I'm all over the place on it this, this is a it's not a spray like I actually get it dried and I just oh. and I burn it yeah so I get a mix um I get it from this at this Etsy shop and it comes in a little bag it's kind of pricey it's a little it's um bag about I don't know this big and it's like I think it's like seven bucks so I mean it's yeah. kind of it's kind of expensive but it's worth it and I just burn it at night so I just like torch it a little bit and it just that sounds um, so nice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it smells, oh, it smells so good. Yeah. I mean, it's roses, lavender, and sage. What more can you ask for? It sounds like a really beautiful <laughs> ritual as well, as well as just being like, it just feels good, you know, to do it. Yeah. I get that. So, so that's one we'll, we'll play with. But yes, yeah, just the reminder air machines. So it's, remember Frank Kind's words if you don't have an air filter, you're the filter <laughs> and plants. Plans. Elizabeth, can I ask a question? It's yeah. okay. It's not totally on theme, but maybe we can find a way for this That's to okay. be. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are your feelings on M Sculpt Neo? I do have feelings on M Sculpt. The, um, that's the thing that you put on your body and it like does contractions. So it does contractions right? and then the Neo uses radio waves to burn fat. Okay, I don't, I don't have any experience. I don't know that it's not that new. Um, uh, okay, so my my thoughts on and I haven't I haven't had a chance to try them yet, okay. um, or like I haven't had a chance to try them. Um, so as far as like to me, the M sculpt seems like a tens machine, like it would do the flexing for you, right? Um, I think so. Yeah, that's yeah. the first part. Yeah, I've used tens several times, like for um, physiotherapy. I've used it before. Um, and it, it does work. 
Um, I've used it. Um, I've showed before the machine I use for my Kegels where it helps, you know, do your Kegels for it, but not do them for you. You're supposed to do it with it, which is what I learned later um, to, to make them more intense. So as far as the M-Sculpt, I think they say it, it makes it seem like you're doing like a thousand sit-ups or a thousand. Yeah, something, something like that. Something like that. Um, my, my assumption is that it probably does, you know, make your muscles contract a lot, <laughs> which is, which is going to do something for them. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, I would, I, I would guess that it probably does give you results. Um, but I would also guess that if you don't maintain, like if you don't keep going, no, it's supposed to be used in conjunction for like the Neo was supposed to be for high performance athletes. And like, what I'm hearing is some women who have had kids and maybe don't have great control of their abdominal muscles, despite, you know, being in programs like this where you're like, I have never tried so hard in my life. And yet, like they said, they've never been able to feel their, their core fire. And they've had like two treatments and they're like, I can plank. Like you have never seen a plank. I can now do these things. Like I've never been able to, because that muscle mind can, it helps to build the muscle mind connection. So that's the part I'm like intrigued on and want to know if, if anyone here has tried it, or if you, if you knew anybody who tried it, because that sounds amazing, right? Being more effective at your own workout. Yeah. When you say it that way, I, I could see the value in that for the reason of doing it, the sessions enough to have the mind muscle connection and feel what that contraction feels like, because then as long as you're willing to go and do the workouts and think about the contraction and push through it, I think that could actually also be very helpful because okay. I know um, when I'm doing like PT or when I'm doing hourglass in person classes, and I'm just like, I have to like grab their bum or grab their ass <laughs> and like and move them and, and hold them until they're just like, I think I feel something like they're like, oh, okay. Or, or they need to be really sore. They need to do a crazy leg day and be like so sore where they're like, oh, now if I move my leg back, I know that I'm flexing my bum, but before I didn't know. So mm -hmm. if you did it for that reason, I think it could actually be beneficial um, potentially with like with my limited knowledge of it, um, okay. but that thought process of it, I think that sure. that could actually be helpful. Okay. So it's not totally malarkey. Like it's not no. like, okay. If, if, if it's a, if it's allowing you to have my muscle connection where you didn't before and get there quicker. And if that's something I don't see anything wrong. Yeah. With. It's to help you get there quicker. Like, it's not like a, I can stop working out. I'm just going to put this thing on my abs and let it do what abs do you, you have to maintain. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, yeah, so I think that be, the, the neo part, I, I've never actually heard that word. And I, I follow different accounts. Like I, I follow accounts that have like plastic surgery and stuff too. Like I want to know what's out there and what's interesting. I'm a girl. I feel like it all uh, be coming for you for, for endorsements. <laughs> like, maybe like, they're probably like, hey. <laughs> no, I, I did have someone in Turkey though say, come on out and you can do any treatment you want. And, we'll there. and I was like, <laughs> But as uh, anyways, awesome. Tell me how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but no, that's an that's an interesting one. And you guys can throw in other things if you want to. That that's totally fine. Um, okay, and let's jump on to the next one that I had in in line. So um, so the dishwasher. Um, this is just one I meant to go and do some reading on it before our call. So I had like up to date information um, and I didn't. So there you go. So I'm just going to go off of the one thing that I remember that made me switch a long time ago. Um, and that was that um, with the dishwasher soap, it can apparently be one of the worst things if you're using a commercial one. And the reason being which is something that I do, which is if you open it and you're just like, oh good, it's done. And you open it when all that steam comes out at you, all that steam is so bad for you because it's like, it's the detergent like coming at you in a heated form, all like you're breathing it in, your nose, your mouth, it's your skin, like all of it. So, um, so if you were to do, yeah, dishwasher, you want to do a, a more natural one. Um, and you know what? It's so funny. I went and grabbed my dishwasher detergent, which I get um, the little tabs to say which brand I get, but it looks like this. And I, I don't remember. I, <laughs> I just know that I um, I go back and forth between um, like one of the three ones at the supermarket that is one of the more natural ones, like the natural this or da, 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 you know, you know which ones I'm talking about, but they... They definitely, if you see in there, 
they they don't stay you see all the broken and stuff there they don't stay together as well as the other ones like all over my fingers but at least when I open it and it's it's all hot I don't feel like I'm going to be taking in as many chemicals <laughs> breathing them in as, as much and you know going into the air and all that kind of thing so that might be one that you might want to look into and as I said I didn't do a fresh research right before the call on it but I do remember that one thing does anyone else want to share anything on dishwasher detergent or no everybody's good right I suddenly don't feel bad about not using my dishwasher I actually don't I have washer? one and I don't even use it like this I just you. I've always been I've always washed the dishes by hand and I'm one of those that if I cook, I'm like washing at the same time and whatever, a little OCD, but, um, so I just don't use it. So for the first time, I don't feel bad about it. That's awesome. And I'm still using my dapple from, from Tyson because it was a good one. Yeah. Right. Go ahead, Charlene. <laughs> Yeah, so I didn't know that when your dishwasher opens up the steam, when the steam comes out, that's not great because my dishwasher does it automatically. The last five minutes, <laughs> it opens and it releases all the steam. Ah. So now, I'm, now I'm, wow, I'm, I'm very concerned about my health. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to now invest in, I always knew I needed to invest in better pods because I use the generic ones. Uh, so I definitely now need to shift that. But for regular dishwashing liquid, gentle on hands, I'm starting, I just started this. I like BioVert. Oh, my it smells first good, right? Yeah, it smells pretty good. Sorry, my son's crying. <laughs> um, but um, I think I was using Palm, one second. <laughs> I know a few of you there know exactly what's happening right now. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> You're still muted. Okay, I have to relocate. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Better. But um, so I just bought that one because I bought it from Farm Boy, the store called Farm Boy, because I think I was using Palm Olive. I don't know, but or I think it was palm olive. I don't think it was Dawn. And I put it in my hands one day to start washing the dishes. And I immediately wanted to like throw up. The scent was so strong in my hand. And I was like, what is that? What did you buy? And he said, I think he, but I accident might've bought palm olive, but it bothered me really, really bad. And I was like, I, I can't wash the dishes <laughs> until we get a new one. So I had to buy the BioVert, um, pretty much instantly, like, I guess, within the next few hours. And I haven't obviously felt like that, but mm -hmm. I kind of like it. So if I've gone that route, I need to definitely change my pods. Yeah. Yeah. Change your pods out, change your pods out. Cause like, it's been a while since I read that, but I do remember reading that it kind of it resonated, like it made sense as far as the heat and yeah. steam and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Good to know. I have a washer that's yeah. just it's, it's a washer dryer combo and it steams. And I'm like, cause when I open it, all that steam comes out. I'm like, is it the same thing with the washer too? Probably. I mean, if it's, if it's going to be, if it's a chemical laden one and, it, and the steam comes out, it's, it's going to go in the air, right? It's going to, it's going to dissipate <laughs> all the fun. All the fun. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, I'll just see if I missed anything. Um, and someone, uh, Amaria said, uh, thanks Brittany for bringing that up. So you've got some of the people interested in that topic as well. Um, okay. So let's jump to deodorant, which I'm sure is one that we've all got opinions on. I don't know how many people have made the switch from antiperspirant to a more natural deodorant, but my thought is there's going to be a good chunk of you that have an opinion on this one. Cause I feel like this is a, a more longstanding one. So these are my two favorites that I kind of go back and forth with it's mine. It's called routine. Um, is one and then Schmidt. And for me, it's kind of funny. I'll usually just kind of use one until it stops working, switch to the other one until it stops working. And I just go back and forth. And for some reason, eventually they'll stop working. But as soon as I switch back, it's, it's good again. I don't, I don't know why I, I really don't, but I'm, I'm hoping that we're all aware. I need to put the kids together. Okay. Thanks, Brittany. Um, uh, I'm sure that we all know antiperspirant now has um, aluminum in it. Um, it is, it can potentially cause breast cancer. They say that it's not, um, 
you know, a coincidence that, you know, the same area we're putting into perspirant that, that we're getting, that's the most common area that we actually get breast cancer coming. So if you haven't made the switch yet, that was one that I would say, please do make the switch. Um, and, and to be honest, there are not all the time, because I guess, you know, I'm, I'm human. I'm not super clean all the time. Sometimes, you know, Caitlin knows we'll be at Starbucks and I'll be like, let's get a muffin and a coffee, everybody, you know, and, and that's when I'll probably be one of those times where I'll need the deodorant. <laughs> And when I'm super clean, it's really weird. I actually feel like I'm one of those people that don't need it at all, um, just depending on what level of health that I'm at at that point in my life. Um, so sometimes I, I feel like I don't need it. And maybe people around me will be like, no, you do, but I don't know. Uh, but but when I do, these are the ones I use. Uh, the routine, the one that I use has the most ridiculous name. It's called Cat Lady. I don't know why they would name a deodorant Um scent cat lady because I don't know what that's supposed to mean but that is the one that seems like the least amount of scent to me and then I use the unscented for this um what is everyone else's thoughts um I'm assuming we're going to have a couple on deodorants so I use um live clean Live, yeah I've heard of that I'm hoping that's a good one <laughs> I, I've, I've been using it for a bit now and I like it. Uh, before that, when I started the journey, which was 2017 summer, I started in the summer. <laughs> that was hard <laughs> trying to get used to all the, the sense changing in my body. Uh, it was by Sage and it was a crystal. Um, it was a spray and then you would use the crystal ball kind of thing and you'd rub it on. I liked it a lot because you didn't need much, but I mean didn't really do the job of masking the scent, so they say, but I, I got used to it. I understood what the detoxification process was and, you know, what it is that I'm eating versus what I'm not eating and how that plays into my own body odor and all that. So I got used to that. And then I, um, they stopped selling that brand because I then got pregnant and my hormones changed. I was like, oh, this deodorant isn't working for me anymore. <laughs> And um, because obviously your hormones change when you're pregnant. And then now I'm using Live Clean. So I really like it. But my husband, I'm trying to get him on the clean deodorant and he's he's not having it. He's I not know it's harder to move the men onto it, isn't it? Hard. Oh, he like sometimes he smells, he's like, ooh, wow, I need to take a shower. I'm like, well then take a shower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I had do you have any tips on how to get the men on it? <laughs> 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 nope. I don't know. <laughs> sure. uh, oh, Myra. Oh, where'd you go? There you are. So I um once I discovered that you got app, I went crazy. And the What's kids hated me for a little bit. Once Yuka, you discovered what? It, it's an app. It's called Yuka. Yeah. Y U K A. Um, once I discovered it. The kids hated me for a little bit, but they got over it because I literally scanned everything. And it was like a couple of days later, they're like, what are those chips? And I'm like, just try them, just try them, <laughs> you know? And like things just slowly started changing. But for deodorants, I, my, I have a 16 year old and he's of course in his, I know everything stage. So <laughs> he needed a new deodorant. So I was like, hmm, teaching moment. So we went to Target together with the app. And I was like, you know, and I just started a conversation with him. I'm like, oh, you know, the, um, there's harmful chemicals, blah, blah. So we literally scanned like every deodorant in there. And he picked one that he liked, what it smelled like, and that scanned clean. Like it, it was like, cause they, um, so the, you scan the barcode and it tells you if it's, like if it's bad, if it's like really like it gives you all these um, like a rating um, and you can see the chemicals that are in it. So, um, but for myself, I got it's raw sugar. And then um, I don't know if you can see it. Neat. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know that one. That's cool. Yeah, it smells good. Um, and uh, my 10 year old who has autism and I don't want to put more chemicals in his body, but I found this one It's called play pits. Oh, cute. Yeah. It smells good. It's like nice and moisturizing and it doesn't have chemicals in it. So, and it scans pretty clean. So that app was really, I mean, like 
I'm a little obsessed. I love that. I mean, I don't have that app. I'm going to have to get it and get obsessed also. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm reading some of the comments here. So Jocelyn said she uses native, which I've used as well. And it actually smells really nice. I think it had like a cocoa buttery kind of scent to it. If I remember the one I got, maybe it was like vanilla or something. Um, that one was really nice. I just remember it, like they don't have it at the stores I go to. So ordering it was just a bit annoying, but I, I remember liking it. Um, on the topic of fragrances, how about burning essences? Does anyone know about that? Because I have never burned an essence. So that is, um, I haven't, I haven't looked into it. Any thoughts from the community? Anyone just listening on, um, but not having their camera on? Okay. We're going to have to look into that one because I was curious but, about the crystal deodorant though that Charlene was talking about because this lady talked to me and she was raving about them because they're made from potassium alum and apparently it's like the salt gets rid of the bacteria under your armpit so it's not like it masks the smell the salt is like pulling it out and she told me that she could put it on and then not wear deodorant for a week so I was like what that sounds crazy so yeah I don't, I don't know about the, about the <laughs> week thing but but everything yeah. that the person said is true and I too like it but I don't know the store stage just stopped selling it and then I said what you're not making any money off of anybody now what's the point <laughs> I don't know but yeah I know it was great it was great okay I'll look out for it somewhere else then Charlene, did you have a thought on it or something else oh sorry Amaya lemon my sister started doing that lemon thing I don't know if you guys I saw it on well, we saw it on TikTok and it was like, people were like using lemon. I haven't done it because I'm a chicken and I'm like, oh no, I'm going to be like running around the house, like slapping my <laughs> arms, but she tried it and it actually works. She says that she doesn't, it, Interesting. she doesn't, I mean, I don't know. I know I sweat a lot. I live in New York city and it is hot as hell here and I sweat. <laughs> so I haven't tried it. I don't think I'm going to try it in the summer, but I heard at least she told me it works for her and I don't know. So that's another thought. Just rubbing le lemon, like obviously not a day when yeah. you shave, but um, you know, maybe like a day after, or maybe later on the the day that you shave, use it. I'm not sure how that works. Like I don't, I don't know, like the scientific, you know, explanation behind it. Yeah. But apparently, it works. <laughs> I use lemon with the baking soda instead of vinegar for cleaning. And I find that leaves like still a lemony smell because I hate the smell of vinegar. It just reminds me of like eating fish and chips or whatever reason. So I can't get vinegar, but the lemon and that, I guess the acid from the lemon, something like that. It still smells like when, like, I guess my mom used to use some sort of Mr. Clean, like toxic um, one, but that lemon smell still kind of leaves like a fresh scent if you don't like the smell of vinegar. Hmm. that's interesting no it's interesting thoughts I know with the the crystal when I was super young and was using secret because that was the the brand that I used and I wanted to use my first natural Jocelyn <laughs> I wanted to use my first natural and I went from secret to the crystal and it did not work for me because I had not detoxed at all. And it was just like, this is, I'm wet and I'm trying to, um, you can see this one. I'm like, this is not going to work for me. And that's the only time I've tried it. So I would be curious about revisiting it like many, many years later and much less of a toxic load on my body since then. But I, I did try it way back then. So I wouldn't recommend going from, you know, secret style antiperspirant to the crystal you might need to do a little detoxing first but yeah maybe it might be something I'd, I'd be curious to try again too that's a fun thought um I think Martha says she has some deodorants to show is that what you were going to um show yes, yes. hi yes. Oh, she's ready she's ready okay show us <laughs> okay um so these are so far the ones I tried I like Native. these yeah uh, I try these don't buy this one it doesn't do anything this is okay, the Copari, but the best one I've tried so far is this one here. What's it it's called? It's really good. It's her mm -hmm. I think about that brand. Yeah, I know that brand. I like some of their face, face stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah and, and uh, it really um, takes care of all the odor. Uh, and I've done, uh, 
Well, I kind of eat clean and uh, these ones didn't work that, as much as well as this one. So I would recommend this one. And I also want to try your cat lady. I know that. <laughs> I, I so the name, name is hilarious. <laughs> It's called routine, but the, uh, the the scent is called Cat Lady. I just find like it it just, you know, out of all the ones I've tried, like even the Schmidt and all the other ones, I found this one does the best job for me. But I find like people's chemistry is a bit different. So it's like, whereas, you know, routine might have worked the best for Jocelyn, I feel like the routine worked the best for me. Um, and it might be even if even if Jocelyn tried both, she might still want to stick to the native and so on. So it, yeah. it is kind of just finding that best one. But I would say trying to have maybe like two just to alternate as well. But um, but yeah. Um, okay, I wanted to jump to um, to cookware just because we're getting a little short on time. And I know this one isn't one that we really talk about very often, but it's nutritionist, right? So I'm a little bit passionate about this one. So I do want to make sure that it's at least just mentioned becomes a bit of food for that for people just in case, um, especially if anyone's still using Teflon or anything like that, that they know to just throw it in the garbage, get it out of your house, it is only causing, you know, problems um, to you. But let me just grab my cookware quickly. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so just just the basics. Um, the number number one in cookware is your your cast iron. This is like your be all end all of like probably the the healthiest of cookware that you can do. Um, I season mine. I don't know if anyone else has any good seasoning tips or if you don't know what seasoning means. Both, either. Okay, let's discuss. <laughs> so when you have cast iron, you're not supposed to wash it with soap. Um, you're supposed to season it, right? So, um, so I have my special brush for it that I use a special brush on it. And then this is the, you, you use oil on it and then you put it in the oven on like 350 or something like that for an hour and that seasons it and it takes the smell and everything out of it. I still have two because I don't find it takes the scent out enough to go from chicken to French toast, if you know what I mean. So I have one that's my, my like sweet and one that's my savory and otherwise they're the exact same. Um, so I use the deodorized coconut oil to season it because it doesn't smell like coconut. It smells like nothing. Um, so that's kind of a fun one. And I use that to season my pans, but this is your, this is your number one healthy. I just put mine in the stove with avocado oil. Perfect. I love that. Um, uh, and then, um, so she's, she's seasoning her pan as we speak. Um, as far as cooking pots, I did a lot of research in this and I still feel like I'm somewhat, I won't say confused, but I'll still feel like I'm left with wanting to know more. And like, no matter how many articles I read, no matter how many scientific studies I read, I was just like, okay, I, I still wish that there was a more perfect cooking option. Um, so I ended up going with this one. This one is called the 360 cookware. Um, and I was going back and forth between getting this one or going you know, like with an all clad or something like that. Um, and the reason I went with this one is because, so there's aluminum in a lot of the stainless steel. Stainless steel is kind of your other go-to. The cast iron, stainless steel, 100% ceramic, and glass. Those are kind of like your four pretty good options. There's not a lot bad with them. Um, so a lot of them, like the all clad and that type of thing, had the aluminum uh, inside it, like deep inside of it. Um, and aluminum, as we know, can cause issues. And when you're heating it, there is that potential that it can go into the food. So this one doesn't have aluminum in it, but aluminum, if you're, if you're more into cooking, like if cooking is your really, really big thing and, and having like that even cooking surface and that type of thing is really important. Aluminum does that. Stainless steel by itself doesn't do it as well. So just keep in mind that you're not going to have as good of a cooking surface when you're missing the aluminum. So I'm pretty sure this one doesn't have aluminum. Um, how do we know? 
how do we know it's a good stainless steel? Um, yeah. Researching it. Um, the ones like when I was looking, the 360 and the all clad, and I think there was um, a couple of other, there's a, a company that makes knives and stuff like that. And it has like two little stick men. Anyone know the name of that company? You know what I'm talking about? I just can't picture the name of it, but that's another brand that's supposed to be good. Ankles? I mean, which one? Ankles? Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one is supposed to be pretty good as well. Um, so those are some pretty good brands. But but basically, if you're going for something like an 100% um, ceramic, a glass, a stainless steel, a cast iron, those are your those are your relatively safe um, materials. If you have, uh, if you still have Teflon, um, like I said, I would literally just say, throw it in the garbage. Um, it is. It, it has so many factors that can hurt you that it's just, it's ridiculous. It's, it's just, you're eating healthy food and you're leaching really, really bad stuff into it. I think I put some notes as to uh, Teflon, most dangerous, uh, PTFE, plastic polymer releases toxins. They have a name that's even called Teflon flu, appears a few hours later. Hours later. Um, uh, PFOA, man-made chemical, stays in the body for a really long time, which is scary. So if you used it a long time ago, still might be in your body. Um, uh, can cause breast, prostate, and ovarian cancer. So just kind of, you know, not not worth not worth keeping not worth keeping in your in your area. So other things that can be in cookware like aluminum and copper, um, aluminum, copper. Those are those are big ones. Um, I mean, copper cookware is really pretty, uh, <laughs> but um, but there there can be some some negative effects to it. So if you have copper cookware, you can kind of just look into that and just see where yours falls. Um, it's really beautiful. Like I have a copper um, kettle that I just use for photo shoots, but I don't actually use it because <laughs> um, uh, it's really pretty. <laughs> but but yeah, I'm um, just seeing if I had any other notes on that. Okay, so anyone else thoughts on cookware? I just had a question. What does what does the Teflon look like? So Teflon is ba your basic, it's your non-stick. It's like that, like picture a frying pan and it has that almost like perfect plastic non-stick feeling. It, it almost has like a texture to it, right? Like if you go to HomeSense and that type of place, full of Teflon, right? Lots and lots of it. Um, so yeah. So if you're if you're not sure, like if you didn't specifically buy, you know, a glass or a, you know, ceramic or something like that, um, there's a good chance that you have Teflon. It's definitely gotten better over the years. Like if you have really old cookingware and it's Teflon, that's really dangerous. If you have newer Teflon, less dangerous, still not good, <laughs> right? Still not your ideal. So. Uh, it's, it's a good idea to just kind of have an idea of what it is that you have in your house. Um, for me, like I got um, this pan for eggs because I was finding making eggs on cast iron was just annoying. It was just annoying. It just, it just doesn't do a wonderful job or maybe I'm not a wonderful cook. I don't know, but you do need to use a little bit more oil. So I use the olive oil and the butter or the ghee. Um, different oils like that. So you do need to use a little bit more oil when you're using like glass and this type of thing. Um, but I got this one, this is a caraway. It is not a hundred percent ceramic. So when I purchased this, I knew one, it's not super cheap, but two, um, I have to treat it like a little, a little baby and be very specific with it. So I bought this only for eggs and pancakes. This is my egg and pancake pan, nothing else because um, from what I read, because it's not 100% ceramic, um, but it doesn't have lead in it either, it means that if at some point I see a crack in the nonstick, it's garbage. You need, it needs to go because that's when it will start to, to leach whatever it is underneath, and that is where it becomes dangerous. Right now, it's fine. And when I use this, like I said, it's only eggs and pancakes. And two, when I wash it, I literally wash it. I, I put two things of the dapple soap. I rinse it around like this with hot water, and that's how I wash it. And then afterwards, I get a microfiber cloth, and I just lightly, and that's it. It doesn't go in the dishwasher. 
I treat it really, really carefully to keep that um, that non the natural nonstick of the ceramic to you know to stay safe. Um, I you know I use lots of butter or yeah generally butter because eggs and and for, and pancakes that we make. And the pancake recipe, by the way, is the best. It's just uh, eggs. Um, it's eggs, banana, um, a little bit of almond flour and cinnamon. That's it. So good. <laughs> anyway, so um, so that's that's this pan. But 100% ceramic is better. Um, but you would have to use a lot more oil or butter because um, that's just it's safer, I should say. Um, let me just see what the other. I saw something about air fryers being bad. Oh no, did you? I haven't seen that yet. And I have I have one that's been gifted to me, and I haven't had a chance to use it yet. But from my research, like my limited research, I hadn't seen anything bad. So now I'm sad. What did you see that said it was bad? I'm just curious. So um, I know Martha mentioned about the Teflon, but I, what I saw was something about the, the like what, what cooks the food. So like the, um, I guess the light that goes on the food, it, um, it has like UV rays or something like that. And so I didn't research it. Like I just saw that one thing and I was like, <gasps> and I kind of, I purposely ignored it because I didn't want to get rid of my air fryer. But since now we're on the conversation, you know, I figured I'd bring it up. Maybe somebody else knows. Okay. I mean, I don't see UV rays as necessarily as being bad, but if there's, um, if there's Teflon in it, then that's something that might be a little bit more like what's, what's happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa, I follow this um, guy that talks about everything and, and it's called Flap City. And Black. his name is Bobby. Black and he, Black. Uh, like Flap City. Black. And his name is Bobby. And he said that uh, the trays that come with the air fryers, they they do have the, the Teflon, right? That you were mentioning. So I was like in disbelief because uh, the Ninja one I have, it does have that kind of tray. So now, like I'm um, like you are uh, like saying Teflon is very bad. So I'm I'm curious because I got the one that I got gifted. I remember taking a quick look in it, and I remember purchasing an extra pad for mine that was a silicone pad to put on the bottom. Um, yeah, maybe to cook the food on. I wonder if that would make a difference because silicone. I mean, I'm still. Silicone is supposed to be from sand, seems very natural. I get most of Tyson's dishes are like wood or glass or ceramic or, or silicone. Um, but I'm still, I'm just waiting for like years to pass and for them to say, oh, it's bad after all. But so far, silicone is supposed to be on it. Like I've got, I was going to show about these, which are silicone. You, you know, you can cook your vegetables and stuff in it and not add oil if you're counting your calories at the time. Um, but, but yeah, that's, that's something to look into. That's a, a really good point for the air fryers because I'm very excited to learn how to use mine. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm hoping that they're, uh, I'm hoping they're remaining on the healthy list because they're, they seem pretty phenomenal from what I've heard. And I want to try to make banana fritters in them and make them healthy because I really like banana fritters. Um, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the topics that we have now because it's quarter after and I want to respect people's time, um, but I just wanted to throw it back out to everyone. Baked peaches, yum. Oh my God. What is that, an air fryer? Wow. That's just, that sounds amazing. <laughs> Does anyone else have any thoughts or questions or anything that they wanted to share? Okay, don't see any hands and you guys were pretty on it. Everybody's good. People got stuff to do. Okay, um, I still had more stuff on my counter here. Do you guys want to continue this at all next week? Okay, so what is next week? Okay, so next week we have a special guest. Um, so the, the week after we can continue because I've still got other, we haven't gotten to like cleaning or any of that stuff yet. Um, but so next week we have a special guest coming on. Um, I've been using... I can't video it because I'm naked, but I'm trying, I might need to just video the light, but I got this. Um, I've talked before about I'm obsessed with red light therapy and infrared therapy. And so is Caitlin. Caitlin goes and does infrared yoga all the time. And it 
does, it, infrared makes you feel phenomenal. Even just like the walks when you go outside, that is the infrared sun. The, when you feel heat from the sun, that's your infrared. Like it's just, it just makes you feel good. It makes you feel happy and warm and it's good for you and all the things. Um, so I have a guy coming on. He makes an infrared sauna blanket. So for those of us that can't get a sauna in our house or can't afford to go and do $50 sauna sessions or how much are your yoga classes? Maybe $25 yoga sauna classes. Yeah, um, if you did one time, that's 20. Yeah, uh, but yeah, so um, he makes a sauna blanket, which I got and have not unwrapped it yet. I need to unwrap it and find a minute to do it. But I have been doing the light every day. I have this big ass red light. Um, that I put on the side of my bed and I just flip around like I'm a, a, you know, I'm in the oven or something like that and just get every part of my body. And it's awesome. <laughs> it's super, super awesome. Um, but he is uh, super like super knowledgeable on all things like infrared, red light therapy, um, detoxing and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, recovery. So like natural healing recovery. So he's going to come on next week and do a little chat and talk about some of that fun stuff. Um, but we can go back to some of this stuff the following week. Um, and for anyone doing Jocelyn's water challenge, if you're not on the wall, Jocelyn has started a water challenge, a hundred day water challenge. Uh, Martha and I think Caitlin are both on it. I'm not sure who else is on it right yet. Um, but, but I'm going to get on it. I was, I've, I'm still just doing my regular, but I actually want to do the extra, um, and join in as well. So thank you, Jocelyn, for sharing that as well. Um, and I think that's dun, 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 dun. Flab, Flab City also talked about air fryers. Oh no. Okay. Oh, Flab. That's what you said there. Okay. And yes. Okay. So yes. So we'll, we'll look into the air fryers as well, hopefully for the next chat. Maybe we can do a little research and I will let everyone go about their evening and go tend to all their people and stuff for the night. Thank you guys. I love that you guys had so much chatty stuff to say today. That made me feel happy. <laughs> Thank you. Have a Bye. Good day. Bye. Bye.